Hello and welcome to today's webinar. As uh, you all might know that we have, you are being using Zoho campaigns for a few days now. And uh, this webinar is mainly dedicated to all of you, where uh, you can be walked through a few features which are very essential. All the features are essential, but today we are going to cover a few features and functionalities that will not only help you understand the product well, but will also help you send out your very first email campaign, strategize it. Basically, we will help you how to initiate, execute, and evaluate your first email campaign endeavor. My name is Sushmit. I'm a product marketer with Zoho Campaigns and the co-organizer for the day is Lijo. He is from the pre-sales team of Zoho Campaigns. As we all know that email marketing even though we are associating towards email and marketing, it has this sense of closeness between two people, between the sender and the recipient. And just like we always put this message before sending out our main message that I hope my messages find you well. So with that note, we will begin the session. This usually is, uh, is, is, an, is the icebreaker stage. But I am definitely sure that uh, all of you who have joined us today, you all are from different industries. Some might be from sales related background. Some might be from marketing background like me. Some might be in the HR field. Some might be looking into financial uh, developments. Some are from the admin departments and there are others as well. No matter which professional background you are from, Email marketing binds us together, to be very precise. Why it is so? This particular question that we have to address on a regular basis, how many of us have sent an email today? Well, to make it more relatable, I have to tell you how many of us have received an email. I'm sure while we are talking, you as well as I, we have definitely received one or two emails, or maybe more than that, in our inboxes. What does that tell you? Even though there is a common notion you might find all across the internet that there are these uh, various articles that exist that say that email is dead, email is dead. The fact that we receive emails on a regular basis and not low but high in numbers validates the fact that email is definitely not dead. It's stronger than ever and it is very effective. It's a 45-year-old practice that has been there around 1978 when this person Gary Turk sent out the first uh, email marketing blast that he did with 397 emails he did two things number one he created the first email marketing blast or uh, sending out many email campaigns together at one time he not only did that but doing that he also triggered the ISPs to mark his email this path so as you can understand, like every email marketing aspect will have two sides. It's kind of two-sided point. There's a good side and a bad side. In a queue from there, like we all have said that everyone is a marketer at the end of the day. Everyone wants to provide a message to the other person. Even when we are discussing topics, even when we are in an interpersonal communication, we are trying to make sure whatever we say is convincing. With email marketing, the power of convincing people and getting to go ahead and fulfill the objective is 42 times more. The ROR or the return or the rate of return or return on investments uh, comes to around uh, more than, uh, it, it, it basically is 77% more with regards to segmented targeted and triggered campaigns. We'll talk about segmentation and how to trigger campaigns and how targeted campaigns can be set up in this webinar later on. The average order value as well of an email is three times higher than social media. Now you might ask me, what, what does this signify? Social media users comprise of more than 85% of internet users in the world. That's a huge figure in that case. And if you get three times higher, then definitely that reflects on the rate of investment as well. Email is 40 times more effective acquiring new customers via Facebook and Twitter. 
So from there, we have to come to this aspect. But today's webinar is to help you understand how email marketing is probably the best thing that has ever happened to you. And you as a marketer can make the most of email marketing. These five areas, if you have taken into account, you can reach out to your customers or contacts to be very precise by social media. We all know there are social media campaigns that go ahead, digital advertising. You can go with paid advertising or whatever way suits you best. Offline, again, you can have a meetup or a seminar and you can ask people to join. Content marketing, you can have content marketing pages, web pages regarding your brand all over the internet, public relations as well, the same when you're going to launch a new product, you have to take into account the PR aspects as well. Now, all of these ensure one thing, that is, uh, ensure two things rather. Number one, that new contacts are brought into your brand's funnel, and number two, the existing contacts are reached out as well. Now, ask one question, which I also want to, which I also want to ask, that is, uh, how are these people or the contacts aware that they are being included in the brand. Definitely, by an email, right? So email marketing basically becomes the base of the entire pyramid of any marketing strategy a brand takes into account. It is omnipresent. It boosts the ROI of every channel, as we said. It's comfortable, reliable, one-on-one -on -one conversation. Why is it comfortable? Again, you sit down and you just write an email as you write an email on, a, on an off day or on a regular basis. At the same point of time, it's one-on-one -on -one conversation because you are sending out an email, let's say to 500, 1000 or 50,000 people at one point of time. But every recipient, email recipient or contact on the other side is going to view it as a one-on-one -on -one conversation, as an interpersonal conversation. Because it is like that, that's why we have aspects of personalization which play an important role with regards to email marketing. We'll talk about that also today. So email marketing is basically built on these four primary aspects. Number one, you have to build your lists organically and properly. You have to take it into account that your lists are well trimmed. Your lists have people who have opted in to receive email campaigns so on and so forth. You have to target the right audience. Again, you have the list. However, you don't know if they are interested in your content or not. And among them, there will be variables. There will be people who might be interested in one kind of content. There will be people who might be interested in another kind of content. So engaging the right audience is also what you need to do and reach out to them. Number three is sending the right message. Once you know who are the people, the next thing is, you have to know what is the right message that you need to write. Once you do that, you definitely take off the three boxes which are very integral. And when you do that, you also need to take into account one more thing that comes as, that automatically comes into equation, that is we have to check the reports. Once you check the reports, you understand what worked well, what didn't work well. Eventually, if you keep this in track, if you keep all of these within your stride of evaluation, at the end of the day, you will find that your revenue is rising. Talking about rising revenues and powerful communication, that is where Zoho Campaigns comes into existence. We help you go ahead and conduct powerful interactions, which is delivered via email. The areas that we are going to cover today are Contact management, campaign creation, automation, and reports and analytics, as I just said. Let's learn more about contact management. Here I'm going to show the product for you. As you can see that the contact tabs, contact tab is on the left side of your dashboard. You can go ahead. Now in contact tab, the main features that we are going to take a look at are lists. We'll take a look at topics. We'll take a look at segments. We'll also touch up on the sign-up forms aspect a bit. So we'll begin with lists. Now, in case you have a list, what does your list do? List and segments, if you have to ask someone, they will tell you that list is static, segments is dynamic. What does that mean? It means that in case of list, any update that you make or any change that you make in the lists have to be done manually every single time. 
In case of segments, which I'll go later after lists, any change in criteria that happens from the recipients or the contact side, it automatically gets reflected in the segments as well. Let's create a list. Now, there are these three ways by which you can bring your contacts into your system. Number one, you can add them manually. When you are adding them manually, what you can do is you have to manually add their different criteria over here and you have to go ahead and include them in your system. Marketing or non-marketing or unsubscribe this is a very important aspect that you have to address. The difference is there can be contacts in your list who have been your customer. There can be contacts in your list who are not customers but are interested in your content. Both the categories can be considered as contacts, but someone who has already purchased from your brand is not interested in the content that you're sending out. Can you consider them as contacts? Yes, you can consider them as contacts. Can you consider them as marketing contacts? Definitely, because they haven't subscribed to receive any email content. So what happens is, likewise, there can be someone who is interested in your brand but is not yet ready to make the purchase. But that person can be considered as a contact if he or she has already wanted, read, and is interested in getting more content to know your brand better. So you should send out email campaigns only to the contacts who are marketing contacts according to you, who have given their consent. You can take the consent via single opt-in or double opt-in based on as you want. In search of topic, we will again talk about topics later, but you can choose a topic over here and you can associate that with the list of names or the number of people that are being allowed to enter into this system. However, what we will do is, today we will take a look at import contacts. In case of import contacts, what you can do is, you have to select a file. Now, when you're selecting a file, you can either select a file from your local computer or any of these cloud-based platforms that are listed on the, on the right side. have this user list. So I'm going to put up this user list over here. When I'm doing it, I have already chosen the particular list. Now I have to choose a preference as to email subscription type. I already talked about marketing, unsubscribed and non-marketing. The people who are your customers or who have interacted with you but are not interested in any content from you or have not subscribed to any content can be considered as non-marketing. The people who had subscribed at some point of time but have unsubscribed now even though they might purchase from your brand or you might interact with them at some point of time but they are not interested in any content from you they can be considered as unsubscribed you shouldn't send out emails to these two categories you should only send out emails to this category now you should associate a topic uh, we'll talk about topics later but uh, for now we can go ahead with some topics over here like Zipker, discount and offers and newsletters. On the lawful basis of communication, again, you have to mention whether they have sent their consent or not. You have to send out email campaigns only to people who have provided their consent. They have opted in to receive email campaigns from you. So that's what you do it over here. You can save it. Finally, we'll take a look at mapping of fields. Now, what happens with mapping of fields is when you are taking a list of contacts from a certain place, let's say your local system or from a cloud-based platform, you will have certain criteria associated with every single list. They can be in the columns. Those can be first name, email address, phone number, country of residence, anything. In Zoho campaigns also, you will find those similar fields. Once you're bringing in a list, from another system or from your local system or from another uh, cloud-based platform. The similar lists of the lists which fetch the similar information, they get mapped automatically. Once that is done, you can definitely save and you can allow that particular list to be in your system.
So after this, we'll take a look at segments. When we are taking a look at segments, I already told you that the difference between segment and list is list is static, segment is dynamic. That is updating of the data. Now, you might ask that how different is list and segment? I'll tell you how different is list and segment. Let's consider a scenario in case of list. Let's say you conducted a recent uh, seminar or a recent uh, meetup or a conference. It was an offline event and you collected names of people from that event or it can be an event where you electronically collected names and information from people definitely post their consent. Now you have to create a database in your Zoho campaign system in order to understand and identify who are these people and how are they prioritized based on their presence. You create a list. You name the list as so and so. Let's name it as Zilker Winter Carnival. It was, it can be considered as a carnival. Now you can create a list called Zilker Winter Carnival and add all these people under that particular list who attended that. Previously, segments were put inside list. Now segments are independent of lists. How? Because segments are now associated with the organization as a whole. So I'll just give you a small example. Of it. Let's say you have a segment. That segment talks about country. And in that segment, you have different countries that are placed over there. Now, if you choose a particular country and you want to send out emails only to people from that particular country, it will fetch all the people in different lists across your organization and will send, and will send an email to each and every person who fulfill that particular criteria of being from that country, irrespective of which list they belong. So you will definitely send out email campaigns to that particular segment, but the number of people doesn't get restricted only to particular lists. It takes segments throughout the entire organization. There might be people who are from different, who are in that, who are from that same country, but are placed in different lists. All of them will be selected altogether. Only those people who fulfill that particular country criteria as the country that you have provided. Let's create a segment. Let's create a segment as active. We can take into account a very important segment that is here. Okay, first thing, uh, there are some pre, uh, there are some segments that are already provided to you. You can also go ahead and create custom segments as per your preferences and, and choices. You have to go into settings section and you can create custom uh, segments as well. So let's take this into account, contact score. Contact scoring is again based on the interactivity and engagement of the recipient. You can assign them a particular contact score. Let's go with five. Let's consider contact score five to be the maximum contact score that is over here. Once you go ahead and provide that, only that particular, only those particular contacts who have gone ahead and fulfill this criteria are considered to be eligible for the email campaign that you send out. Then you have to create save. And once you do that, you definitely create a segment consisting only of people throughout the entire organization who have fulfilled the contact score of five, suggesting that they have been very interactive whenever they have received an email. This is the difference between segment and list. Now we can take a look at topics. Now segments and lists, both these filtration systems are within the organization. You know who is coming from which segment, who is present in which list, but your contacts, they don't, right? But at the end of the day, you have to send out targeted emails to them. And how would you do that? You can do that with topics. Topics are nothing but types of content that you send out to people. Now there are different types of hierarchies. There are basically two types of hierarchies. One hierarchy that takes into account only one product under one brand and creates topic under that. Second one, it takes into account different products under one brand and creates different topics under that. So let's take, for instance, this one. This is Zilker is the name of the brand and Zilker 
produces uh, zilker uh, provides people with different kinds of products and services so zilker coffee zilker dm agency zilker electronics these are the three types of products or services that zilker provides sorry for that these are the three types of uh, products that zilker provides now what happens is each and every type each and every product that you have they have two different topics under them so what happens is in your database you might have let's say 500 people all of them are interested in the zilker brand but among those 500 people all of them will definitely not be interested in the zilker brand right they might be interested in a particular product under zilker brand. so that particular product let's say zilker coffee is that product so let's say 150 people are interested in zilker coffee among those 150 people there are people let's say 50 or 100 100 people they are interested in getting newsletters there and the rest 50 people are interested in getting discount offers or discount related emails from them. so you can differentiate and understand what is this what are their tastes and preferences based on that you will at the end of the day send out only the relevant email that fulfills the criteria of the relevant content that they have asked for so your content so your brand is zilker the product that they are interested under your brand zilker is zilker coffee the kind of content that the both group that both the groups are interested are regarding uh, monthly newsletters and discount offers so those 100 people who are interested in newsletters will definitely get email newsletters on a regular basis the ones who are interested in discount offers will get emails related to discount offers as per your preferences we also said that we will talk about sign up forms right so in sign up forms what happens is let's first take a look at sign up forms let's create a form first so when you have to choose a template you will have con compact forms banner forms long forms you can also have pop up forms which you can float across your web websites again how you can do that is based on two aspects number one the time limit a person has to be in a particular website web page for a certain period of time only after that he or she will get to see this particular pop up form or also based on the scrolling of the person if the person scrolls the page until a certain uh, portion then only that particular pop up form will appear it's personally it's basically based on the dynamics of strategy and uh, psychology from your side let's choose a long form so let's choose a sign up form this is a long form in this case so as you can see that the fields are already here you can even customize the fields but what i wanted to talk about was that you can also include topics over here you can definitely go ahead and choose the topics that are already we have talked about that are placed within the topic section of your organization you can choose the relevant topics and you can just drag them and drop them in the newsletter and you can take it into account that whenever the person who is coming into that particular sign up form if he or she is interested in that topic they will click or they will tick it the moment they do that you will understand that they are interested in that topic so as you can see targeting people filtering them down is important and necessary because at the end of the day you might reach out to 5000 people but are you reaching out to them in an accurate manner are you sending out the right email content to them or not that also matters most because targeting people and going ahead and doing your marketing endeavor aimlessly will again it can end up with uh, bad repercussions it might not see you having the right amount of revenue at the same point of time it can also lead to dire consequences like getting you uh, ticked off as spammer or also can people can also unsubscribe from receiving your email campaign and in a more extreme situation if you send out unsolicited emails they might also lead to your domain being blacklisted that we have already understood about how you can reach out to people so we have addressed the right set of audience that you need in order to go ahead and go ahead and do your marketing endeavors next we will take a look at content when we are talking about content we have to take into account that we have to create an email campaign first so when you are going to create an email campaign firstly you will see that there are these different types of email campaigns that you can 
create uh, regular their ab testing email campaigns rss campaigns zoho meeting campaigns again uh, ab testing is basically testing out two versions of an email campaign with a test group and seeing which version works well rss campaigns they uh, they refer to uh, if you are providing any updates in your uh, brand they will take into account that particular update and they will automatically inform or update the people who wanted that kind of content that this particular update or this particular progress or this particular change that has been made in the in the in the in the, in the web page or in, in in the blog or something that you can go ahead and provide zoom meeting again talks about if you are if you are going ahead and conducting a webinar or something like that sort you can send out a zoom meeting email go to webinar even bright is for event related emails <clears throat> If you want to send out a survey campaign, you can send it via Survey Monkey, Zoho Survey. Backstage again, similar to uh, creating an event that you want to go ahead and uh, ask the people to join. You can send out coupon campaigns to them. Coupon campaigns work well during this time, which is again the holiday season. E-commerce again has a specific email, uh, uh, a specific email setup for themselves also. If you're from e-commerce, and if you want to ask them. To go ahead and fill up a form, you can also do that with Zoho Forms. So today we will create a regular email. We'll name it as uh, Zilker Winter Carnival 2023. We will select a topic. As we already chose the topics during that time as Zilker Coffee, we will uh, choose. Now, why do we have to select a topic over here? Right? We have to assign a topic because the topic that you are selecting over here, the email has to be in line. with the kind of topic that you're selecting and when you are doing that as well when you're selecting a topic only the people let's say within a list or within the segment that you choose only people who have subscribed for that topic will go ahead and receive that email from you really wonderful right you 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 can you can definitely send out emails to maybe a lesser number of people in this case but you will ensure that all these people who are interested in receiving email campaigns right you will just not aimlessly go ahead and send out email campaign in this case Then you have to put the proper subject line and pre-header, one that basically justifies the content that you are sending out. Sometimes these factors matter a lot when you are sending out emails. Your ISPs check these and see if they truly are in line, if they are truly validating the content that you are sending out or not. And based on that, your emails get placed in the inbox. In the sender name, again, uh, there are certain good practices that you can go ahead and do. send the name let's say since i am sending it out can keep it as sushmit from zilkar why am i doing it because sometimes your send the name associates the brand and the sender who is sending it so let's say the isp knows you because you might have sent out an email before but not associated the brand before so they will definitely take you into account they will find it relevant they will definitely place the email in the inbox however in certain cases let's say you not you might not have sent out an email from your brand or someone else has sent it out but in that case zilkar the name it featured in the sender address so irrespective of you or someone else who sends who sends an email from zilkar zilkar the name is taken into account and that particular email will be placed in the inbox so you can definitely go ahead and save this after you do this you have to add recipients now here comes the tricky portion I already said that you can either send out emails to lists or segments, and I also explained how lists are different from segments. Since we already chose a topic, irrespective of the segment or the list that you choose over here, what happens is people only will get the email who have subscribed for that particular topic from you. So today we will choose a list since we are, we added a list. So this is the list in this winter carnival. 2023, and we will, and you can go ahead and save that. So only those people will get the email from you who belong to that particular list. Now take, let's take a look at how you can create a campaign. In this case, there are safe templates. Safe templates definitely refer to those templates that you have already used previously and which might have worked well. Pre-designed templates are those templates which are already designed uh, and provided to you from Zoho campaigns. You can just tweak them a bit in order to add a flavor. associated to your brand you can add your brand logo you can just work around those particular templates they are already aesthetically pleasing and they are beautiful 
and you can definitely go ahead and use them. Then there are the basic templates that you can go ahead and create. These basic templates uh, can also be useful to you if you want to go ahead and send them. Today, we will choose a pre-designed template. As you can see, let's take into account one pre-designed template. And this is where you can see that your creativity comes into the forte. Your creativity comes to forte over here. Now, what happens is these are the elements that you can choose from. Layout, as you know, takes care of the alignment of your email campaign that you're going to send out. Design addresses the dimensions and the width, color, and all these aspects in your email template. Under elements also, there are text, image, image and text, all these that you can come across. Buttons definitely are very important because they are the interactive elements in your email template. Columns, you can definitely accommodate more images and maybe uh, sentences by using columns. You can definitely use social to put social widgets uh, at the bottom of your email template and you can associate them with your social marketing as we did talk about social marketing right being one of the main uh, marketing factors that uh, you can go that you might have uh, conducted at some point of time footer is very important because your footer keeps uh, a few things into uh, takes few things into account they give your proper identification and also con contains the unsubscribe link which are very important apart from like without which you shouldn't send out any email campaigns because they uh, provide transparency and also allow the people to make choices regarding the kind of email content they want. Spacer, as it says, spacer divider. We'll talk about one specific functionality in this uh, email template editor is this particular element called dynamic content. Now, under this dynamic content element, you will come across paragraph, you will come across image, come across text and image, and you will come across CTA buttons or interactive buttons within the email template. Now, what happens is, let's say you have 5,000 people in your list. Now, among all those 5,000 people, let's say all of them are happy customers that you have. Uh, let's say all of them are contacts that you have. But among those contacts, there are 500 people who are your contacts as well as customers who regularly buy from you. Now, you don't want to create two different sets of email templates, design them and send out to them on two different occasions, right? Let's say you have to wish them for the upcoming holiday that's coming up today, like upcoming holiday can be Thanksgiving, that's a few days later, or it can be Christmas, it can be Diwali. So what you can do is in this case, you create one template and what if you could create different editions of that email template? I'll tell you what happens with that is, once you create different editions, you create one template at one point of time. However, you can create two editions at that same point of time as well. So when you send out your email campaign to 5,000 people, 4,500 people will get the default template that you created and 500 people will get the template where you have definitely put a special message or a special uh, video message or, or, or some kind of... Uh, or, or a special message or some kind of a special image that you might have put here. So that is a differentiator. You don't necessarily need to go ahead and create two different or three or four different editions of email templates and send out those email campaigns different times. You can do that at one point of time with very less hassle. So let's say you take into account image and you go ahead and put an image here. Now once you do that, Again, we came across something like this, a similar UI when we were addressing segmentation, right? So again, you have to definitely put the criteria over here. Once you put the criteria over here, what happens is those people who fulfill that particular criteria within the list or segment that you have chosen to send out the emails to will get that special message with that special content from you. The rest who don't in that particular list or segment that you have chosen will get the default variant or the default edition of the email template that you are designing. Design section, I also wanted to tell you, we have introduced RTL layout or right to left layout. In case you want to write an email in Arabic and Hebrew, you can also go ahead and do that. Another aspect that I wanted to address with regards to personalization, okay. 
we are talking about personalization in this case i'm sorry i forgot to tell you all these aspects take into account personalization because again what is email it is a hassle free interpersonal communication that a sender and a recipient conducts and continues what happens in this case is uh, we'll talk about merge tags now now merge tags might definitely look like a, a code that has been placed in the email template however that code basically has to fetch the particular information from the set of information that the sender has given to you, the contacts are given to you. If you put first name, let's say you're sending out an email campaign to 500 people in your list. All of them have, while uh, filling up the sign-up form or in any way, have given you their first name and that basically is present with you as a form of information. Now, what you do is, when you're sending out an email campaign to them, you can definitely take, uh, let me show it to you. You can definitely choose the place where you want to put the merge tag and you can put first name over here. So it might look like a code to you, but what happens is when the recipients receive this email, every single recipient who has provided, again, in the list or the segment, every single recipient has to, or contact has to provide that particular information only after that you can go ahead and choose that particular merge tag that is correspondent to that particular information that they have provided now if you wouldn't want to send out an email campaign to people choosing the first name merge tag in the contact merge tag and uh, they will just see it as this code right they wouldn't want that so you will want to increase the sense of personalization and human factor in your email campaign so when it reaches the people who have already provided their uh, first name within that particular list or segment, when it reaches them, when they open the email, they will see their first name and that will definitely make them happy. Everyone will definitely be happy when he or she sees that the email has been addressed to them and it is not something like hi there or hey there. So definitely that works well. And uh, again, with merge tags, there are other merge tags like uh, you can definitely have a video merge tag. You can share a video with regards to your brand so that you can educate them well. Another merge tag that I wanted to talk about was a vCard merge tag. vCard merge tag, what is a vCard? vCard is basically a virtual representation of the business card that you have. The vCard you have to put anywhere, you can put anywhere in your email template. Now, once you put that, it carries the information of your brand, but it doesn't end over there. Just like the ISP recognizes your brand name and your name and then places it in the inbox. If you send a V-card and if a particular ISP checks that V-card and keeps it in their database, every single time you send out an email, they will cross-check with that V-card and if they find you corresponding to that, they will definitely let you in and they will definitely place you in the inbox. So V-cards, again, address the aspect of transparency, create personalization, at the end of the day, bringing people together with interpersonal communication using emails. <laughs> we have addressed the aspect of right person. We have also checked what the right people that how you can bring them in your system after bringing them, how you can reach out to them. Next, we also got to know what is the right type of message that you can send out to these people. The next thing that remains to us is when is the right time to reach out? That is when workflows come into existence. Workflows are email marketing automation system that you have. So it's a feature that you have. Again, workflows, again, workflows take into account a few things. Number one, Workflows decrease your effort. Workflows increase your um, reachability with regards to accuracy in time. Workflows simplify your work in a simple way. Now, let's create a workflow first. There are these pre-designed workflow templates that you already can see here and choose from here if you want to. However, today we will go ahead with a custom.
So let's take a look at how the workflow um, canvas looks like. This is a workflow canvas where you can go ahead and create the kind of workflow that you want to go ahead and interact with. So there are form submissions. This type, these are all triggers. With triggers, your contacts enter the workflow. As the word trigger suggests, your contacts, this kind of an entry point, or a gateway point for your contacts to enter the workflow. We have form submission. Whenever someone uh, submits, uh, fills up a form and submits it, that particular form, if it is associated with a workflow, they will enter the workflow. List entry is, again, people who are entering the list. Either the new people, the old people in that list, new, new people are the people who have entered the list recently, old ones are the people who have been in the list for some time. Either both or any of the categories that you want can enter this particular workflow. Same with segment as well. With date field, you can choose a particular date which they have given as a preset date field that has been placed. It can be a birth date, it can be a renewal date for subscription based on your preferences, or it can also be a date that you are giving from your side in case you are tentatively expecting a new product launch or a webinar or anything. Email action depends on their action in the previous email that you've sent out. Based on that interactivity, they'll be allowed to enter this workflow. Field update, if their field is updated based on their uh, developments from their side if there are certain field updates that are done that will also take this into account tags assigned tags removed if you can provide tags to them if they have removed tags from them based on your actions they'll be allowed to enter open trigger abundant cut again abundant cut purchase follow-up product specific triggers are all e-commerce based triggers then we have the cyclic trigger today we choose a date field trigger to make it more relevant since we are having a webinar let's go ahead with the date field trigger as I already told you that in date field trigger, there are two categories that you can go ahead and address. Number one is when your contact have provided a custom date in case of a custom date field, this has to be a selected date field that they have provided. It can be, I told you what kind of date it can be. However, since we are talking about a webinar, it is always better to go with specific date, a uh, specific uh, date because a webinar or a product launch is something that you know when it is going to happen, your contacts don't. So you can definitely go ahead and begin a webinar at a certain point of time as you deem necessary. Let's say we are going to contact, we are going to conduct the webinar on 20th of December. Now what happens is your uh, contacts can enter anytime during the, sh during the selected date or you can allow your contacts to enter the webinar between a certain point of time you can also allow the contacts to enter the webinar during a certain point of time. This is important. You can allow the workflow, uh, you know, you can allow the entry of your contact into the workflow a few days prior to the particular event, in this case, a webinar that you're going to conduct. That's what you should do. You can, you can keep it as, uh, let's say, 20 days. Now to address the most important question, who are the people who are going to enter the workflow? That is when you take into account Sorry, now to address the most important question, who are the people who are going to enter the workflow, right? This is how you can select the people that are going to enter the workflow. You have to select the people based on the criteria that you provide. Very much similar to the criteria section that we saw in segment that we also saw while creating the dynamic content. So the people that you choose based on their criteria who fulfill this particular criteria will be allowed to enter the workflow. After this, we'll take a look at process. Process basically is something that facilitates your workflow uh, path. Why? Because it splits your workflow path between contacts. It merges them. It also takes into account any kind of interactivity that they might have done. And based on that interactivity, it can choose two paths for them. It can choose multiple paths for them. By multiple paths very easy because one email will have different interactive uh, uh, touch points like open, click, um, not received, ignore. There are many touch points. Based on that, you can definitely create multiple paths for them. Email activity again takes into account the email activity of a past email that you want to associate with this particular email. Actions on the other hand are divided into three sections, engagement, productivity, and so on, CRM actions. In case of engagement, you have send email that is a very basic one you can send an email to them with a b test you can create two variants or two 
different uh, versions of one particular email campaign and test it out as we talk. Send SMS, you can send SMS to them. Survey, you can send out survey emails to them. In productivity, as the name suggests, depends on the productivity of the person that you're reaching out. Based on their productivity, you can allow them to enter a list. You can remove them from a list. You can go ahead and assign or remove tags from them. You can provide scores or subtract scores. You can update their field. You can put an internal notification to another team, or you can also allow them to exit from the work. No? This is very important. It's called subscription management. Just for the sake of showing it to you, I'll show it over here. In case of subscription management, what happens is, we talked about what kind of topic, what kind of content, people want, right? Now, in case of subscription management, you can help your contacts choose a particular topic via a workflow itself. When they are within the workflow, they can definitely go ahead and choose the particular topic that they want. Let's say your workflow is being conducted for two months. They're sending out an email campaign regarding a particular content. They're interested in that content. They will go ahead and they will interact with it. They will click on the required link that you want and they will be allowed to Go ahead into the active section. Now, let's say your contacts are not interested. What happens in that case? If your contacts are not interested, they will not interact with the email. With those contacts, you can either allow them to exit the workflow, or if you think that for a very long period of time, they have been interactive in other workflows as well, you can definitely help them by either removing them from that particular topic, removing them from all the topics, or as you deem necessary, you can go ahead and take an action based on your preference and based on the betterment of the plan. Let's say what normally follows after this is a wait condition. As I said, you wait for some time. This is a wait time, this is a wait condition. In wait time, you normally associate that and make it a point that the next element in the workflow is started only after a certain point of time that you have chosen. Let's say five days or six days after the first email campaign that you send, you expect the people to go to the next stage of that workflow. So you can choose wait time. In case of wait condition, you can do the same, but you have to take into account in wait condition uh, what kind of uh, interactivity they have gone ahead and done. Finally, we have Zoho CRM actions where you can push their data or create a task in Zoho CRM if you think that they are sales ready. So today what you'll do is, since it's a webinar, we'll send the first email to them. Now based on the first email that we have sent out to them, we will get to understand who is interested and who is not. So we can go ahead and click on the add response section. Once we do that, we have to take into account, let's choose click on any link and we put it. So the people who definitely have chosen, uh, who definitely have uh, uh, clicked on that particular link will be allowed to go into the next stage. Now, when they go into the next stage, to the people who have already clicked on the link, you need to send out a thank you email to them and you also need to tell them that a webinar recording or something that will be sent to them. Now, immediately you don't want to go ahead and uh, do that, right? Like you don't want to go ahead and uh, send another email to them after this. So what you can do is you can choose wait time after this, you can definitely choose the wait time. And let's say you choose the wait time as 20 days. And after 20 days, when the email, when the webinar has already happened, what you can do is you can again send out an email to them this time with the, with the, uh, this time with the, with the email recording, uh, sorry, this time with the webinar recording that you have. Once you have done that, once you have sent out the webinar recording to them, you can allow all the people to exit the workflow and that's how your workflow system will be complete. See, it's so hassle-free. And yes, again, once you design the workflow, you have to activate it. Once you activate it, then only the workflow will be activated. See, it's so hassle-free. You can go ahead and interact with people, allow them to enter your particular webinar or allow, allow them to enter your particular workflow. And in no time, you can basically create an engagement of days or months by a few clicks. That's how hassle-free, as you can see, that's how hassle-free workflows are. Talking about workflows, we already have addressed the aspect of right person, who are the right people that you can bring into the system. 
right message what is the message that you can send out to people based on the taste and preferences we have also in workflow we have understood what is the right time when is the right time that you can send out the next email when you can go ahead and interact with them based on their interactivity and also based on their preferences in the case of right time when you are sending out an email campaign if it's a singular email campaign while sending it out you will be provided with the option of sending the email campaign then or scheduling it at a certain point of time also you can schedule it based on the more interactive time that they have that is called send time optimization let's say you have sent out an email campaign to a group of people in the past and that particular time has worked well for you what you can do is you can send out emails to them based on their previous interactive time based on their previous active time finally as we know we have to talk about reports and analytics to evaluate the campaigns in case of reports and analytics what happens is we have already talked about uh, workflows right so i wanted to begin from there let's say say uh, how good it would be if you got to see the reports and analytics of your workflow from there itself so what happens is with reports within workflow you get to see a version report the version report tells you that every single time in the workflow you had a version of it right it's from the beginning to the end so you will get to see each and every version of your workflow and how it fared during that time entered the workflow exited re enrolled or goal achieved you can also type in the contact email id who might have entered that workflow and get to see what is the path that person has traveled you will also get to see the metrics of each and every element that you have placed in the workflow this will give you an understanding as to where your workflow was right where it didn't work well if it didn't work well how it didn't work well if it worked well why did it work well all these aspects can be taken into account apart from that you can also generally take a look at uh, uh, generally you can generally take a look at reports in that case you have to take into account campaigns that you have sent out it's a campaign based report you can take google analytics into account and get a detailed understanding with google analytics as well campaigns based report based on the campaigns that have been created by you list based reports is based on the lists that have been reached out by different campaigns that have been created or sent out by you sms campaign based reports tells you as to how your sms campaigns fared among your uh, sms campaign recipients if you take one particular campaign into account you can click it and then you can see you can take a look at recipient activities you can take a look at these different metrics that are provided delivery and bounces can be taken into account all these give a reflection of whether you reached out the right people with the right content at the right time or not clicks unsubscribes unique clicks everything is taken into account click activities bounces social stats are also seen over here you can get to see the optimal open time when the people have opened the email you can also take into account the geographic uh, element of when the email where the email fared well where it didn't fare well all of these can be taken into account with the help of reports and analytics in soho campaigns giving you a clear understanding as to whether whatever you have done with regards to your email campaigns if you did it correctly or not finally i really want to thank all of you for joining today's session and uh, it's great that you joined us for this session if you want to reach out to me uh, this is my email id sushmit.s@zohocampaigns.com you can also contact our marketing team at marketing@zohocampaigns.com you can also reach out to our support team at support@zohocampaigns.com